Hey, we're going to be running through the reactions of benzene. There's six Fidel Crafts reactions that we need to know of. Later, we're also going to do phenol, but let's start with the easiest. So, the easiest is probably halogenation. And that doesn't require a mechanism, so we could just do C6H6 plus um, 3H2. We have a nickel catalyst, and that gives us C6H12. So we had a delocalized ring of electrons in benzene. I'll just draw it here. Then we have 3H2. So now we don't. Now the hydrogens are going to be on either side like this. Uh, to keep the video short, I'm not actually going to draw all the hydrogens, but yeah, they're just here. Okay, next we have combustion. Okay. And that doesn't actually have a mechanism either, at least that I know of. Uh, so we'll just do uh, C6H6 plus um, 7.5. 7.5O2, 6CO2 plus... 3H2O. Um, yeah, just we're adding oxygen. It's being burnt in oxygen. It produces carbon dioxide and water. It's just the normal products of combustion. Now, a more complicated reaction is bromination. And actually, we can go about this in two ways with benzene. One of them is addition. which requires UV light or any other radical initiator like azo compounds or something. But I, I think we just need to know about UV light and it's pretty simple. It's just uh, C6H6 plus, I don't believe we even need a catalyst. Uh, let's do Br2. We just get C six H five B R plus um, H B R. Of course, since this is a radical substitution reaction, we could have many side products. I'm not going through all the propagation and initiation steps, but uh, we're just going to focus mainly on substitution because that's what we need to know. So let's do. Bromination substitution. This is the more interesting one. Uh, we don't need UV light for this, but we do need to heat it under reflux with ethanol. And like pretty much all Fidel Crafts reactions, we need a halogen carrier. So, carrier, these can be something like aluminium chloride, we can have aluminium bromides, that would work, uh, but we could also have iron 3 bromide, which is what we're going to use for our example, because, let me just move this. It's enough for bromination to just add iron flakes to make uh, FeBr3. So the iron would react to the excess of bromine, which produces our catalyst, 
and then our catalyst would react with the rest of the, not react, uh, catalyze the reaction between the rest of the bromine, iron, um, and the benzene. Sorry, not iron, bromine. bromine. Anyway, so let's start by adding iron. So we have Br2 plus Fe plus FeBr3 should give us our catalyst. I'm fairly certain that's how it works. Now that we have this, we could go ahead and use that in our reaction. So FeBr3 plus Br2. That creates our uh, electrophile. So we end up with Fe. Br4, that's become more negative. We also, however, end up with a bromide ion, Br+. That's our electrophile, that's what's going to be attacking that really electronegative region at the center of benzene, rather that delocalized ring of electrons. So let's just draw that. This is our ring. We have bromine. Distorts the ring, and then we form a new bond. Br, H, and now this region is going to be slightly more positive because while we still do have a ring, we already have four bonds here. So it's not totally unhybridized, this pi bond. Um, and of course, this is going to feel an attraction. We're gonna lose this hydrogen to restore the ring. Yeah, proton or H plus ion. Now, what happens to this is if you remember, we have this FeBr4, which is negative, plus FeBr4 minus. So we're just taking away this bromine. We're oxidizing it, not the bromine, the compound, FeBr4, and we get FeBr3, again, it's now stable, and we get hydrobromic acid, and that should be stable, but you'll notice that we've gotten our catalyst back. It had briefly become FeBr4, now it's back to FeBr3, so it can be used over and over again. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So we've done bromination, now let's do nitration. I think we have enough space. Okay. Nitration. So this is not much more complicated, actually it's going to be a bit shorter even. Uh, you want to warm the benzene with concentrated nitric acid, um, and we're going to use a sulfuric acid catalyst. Warm benzene with concentrated nitric 
acid. So we have nitric acid. I'm gonna get sulfuric acid. This is going to give us our nitrate ion. Uh, NO plus, NO2 plus. This is a hydronium ion now. This uh, apparently it could actually act like um, an electrophile, but mm, it's unlikely in this reaction. So we're just we're just gonna ignore it. Uh, what we are interested in is this nitrate ion and this, which is later going to be used to reform our um, sulfuric acid catalyst. Now, we have our electrophile, right? So, we're just going to draw this again. Our ring, and we have NO2. This positive is particularly attractive to the delocalized electrons here, so we're going to end up forming a bond. As usual, this the bond in this hydrogen is going to be sacrificed to uh, re-establish this ring of delocalized electrons the unhybridized p orbitals. So, we end up with... Let's move the camera. NO2. It's a H plus ion. And... You'll notice that this is what we have left. H plus plus 2HSO4 minus... Of course, we're going to have 2H pluses. That's going to make... Let's move this again. 2H2SO4. So... We have our catalyst again, H2SO4, this one. Um, and yeah, that's it. So, something to bear in mind Friedel Crafts reactions they require anhydrous conditions. So, you could use ethanol potentially. And they always need a halogen carrier catalyst, like discussed earlier. Now, we're going to move on to archylation, which is probably one of the more popular reactions. I'm going to use halogenyl alkanes for that. Um, we should have space. Yeah, okay. So for this one, let's use one of the other um, halogen carriers that we discussed. We said ALCO3. Let's, yeah, let's use this one. So. ALCL3 plus CH3Cl, as promised, our um, halogen arcane. That's going to give us our electrophile. And this is going to react with the benzene ring. Distort this ring, 
going to end up with CH3, uh, a methyl group, and of course we have this hydrogen here that we always swap out so that we can get a full um, delocalized shell ring. CH3 is just here, but if it's a skeletal formula, I doubt we need to draw it. I might as well just put our calation. Yeah. Now that we have our H plus, we'll just react it again with the AlCl4. H plus plus ALCL4 minus gives you ALCL3, the original reactant of the catalyst, and HCl. So, yeah, we have it returned again. Here we are. Okay. So that was our chylation. Now we have one more benzene reaction. We're going to do it on the flip sides because we are really running out of space. And that's called acylation. I'm going to use acyl chloride in this example. I'm going to use an acyl, an acyl compounds. In this case, it's going to be acyl chloride. That's going to be our reacting species. So first, let's just use a generic. ALCL3, a uh, halogen carrier, plus CH3COCl, I believe it is. Let me just double check. Yes, that's right. I'm gonna get CH3CO plus and ALCL4. This Chlorine is drawn to this aluminium chloride. Oh, that's minus. This is our electrophile, so it reacts pretty similarly, if you ask me. We have CO. CH, yeah, okay, COCH3, this gets attacked, and remember, since we have this delocalized ring of electrons that's vulnerable to electrophilic attack, these reactions are pretty, you know, easy to do. They're pretty common. Now we have our distorted ring. We have the CH3CO. You could just write it like this, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to have these electrons in the bond drawn over to the ring, releasing the hydrogen. And then finally, we're going to reunite this with AlCl4. So,
gives us our catalyst back. We get hydrochloric acids. So, that's all the benzene reactions. Now let's look at phenol. We can do it here. So, phenol looks like this. Now you notice that since we have this really negative uh, hydroxide group, our delocalized ring of electrons is going to become kind of distorted. It's going to look more like something like this. Uh, this is a more negative region. So we could get something called a... Um, we get O. That was called uh, phenoxide ion. If we lose the H. Uh, and that is really vulnerable. It's actually a really weak acid. Um, and it is vulnerable to electrophilic attack. However, for stuff like bromination, we don't really need a catalyst. Um, all we need is a little bit of heat. Not too much, or we might get an explosive. So let's give an example. If we have it's phenol, maybe yeah, Br two. Obviously, we end up getting. Probably get over here. We we don't want it too close to the hydroxide, because you know this is negative as well. Um, occasionally we could get HBr. Not entirely sure. Now you don't want to heat this above. 55 degrees Celsius, because otherwise you'd get an explosive. It's part of the process of how trinitrotoluene is made. Uh, if you're nitrating this, yeah, good luck. <laughs> um, make sure to do under safe conditions. You do want to heat this. Um... That's all the reactions, I believe. Yeah. Whoa. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.